You know, in Nevada, USA, water is more precious than electricity. You can survive a power outage, but if the water runs out, the entire city would stop breathing. Each year, the state receives only about 7 inches of rainfall, much less than many semi-desert regions around the world, and it has virtually no stable natural water sources to sustain its population. And in the face of that reality, Nevada is pursuing an idea that seems to defy all natural logic. To draw water from the Pacific Ocean, transport it over mountains, across deserts, and create new lakes in a place where water has never truly belonged. Why would the driest state in the U.S. dare to consider bringing an entire ocean into the desert? How could humans believe they can overcome a climate that has shaped this land for millions of years? Today, let's join Terran Works in exploring the story behind Nevada's bold ambition. If there is a land where drought isn't a crisis, but the default state of history, that place is Nevada. Located in the southwestern United States, between arid mountain ranges and enclosed basins, Nevada doesn't just suffer from water shortages during dry years. It was formed and has existed under a prolonged state of thirst, lasting for centuries. Most of the state lies within the Great Basin, where the scant rainfall neither flows to the ocean nor accumulates in rivers or lakes. Instead, it quickly evaporates or seeps deep into the ground, disappearing from the surface. With no major rivers to nourish the land and no stable natural lakes for long-term storage, Nevada has long depended on borrowed water. As its cities expanded, especially Las Vegas, that thirst became even more apparent. The population grew rapidly, tourism boomed, but the natural water supply remained nearly unchanged. The entire structure of daily life, economy, and energy in the state became tightly bound to a single source. Water brought in from outside. And when that source began to weaken, everything that depended on it started to shake. For many consecutive years, drought has no longer been an exception, but the new normal. Nevada is no longer asking how much longer will the drought last, but rather whether the state can continue to exist in its current form. And out of that prolonged thirst, ideas once dismissed as impossible have started to make it onto the table. When a land is born in a state of thirst, people don't wait for water to come. They go looking for it. And in the United States, searching for water has never been a small matter especially in the West where deserts stretch wide and populations continue to grow. Engineers haven't just built roads or cities, they've tried to rewrite how water moves across an entire continent. Throughout the 20th century, America entered an era where many believed that nature could be reshaped with engineering blueprints. Straight canals were drawn across maps, slicing through deserts like precise cuts. Water was pumped over mountains, through valleys, spanning hundreds, even thousands of kilometers, to sustain lands where rivers had never flowed. The Hoover Dam, the Colorado River system, and massive irrigation projects turned the arid west into a place where people could live, farm, and build cities. But that very success also gave rise to an illusion that water could always be delivered anywhere, as long as people had enough willpower and money. Nevada, with its centuries-long thirst, became the clearest embodiment of that belief. The state didn't just stand on the sidelines of water projects. It was always at the forefront, ready to join nearly every proposed river diversion plan. The peak of America's water infrastructure ambition emerged in the mid-20th century, a time when people believed that every geographic limit could be bent by engineering. During this era, a serious proposal was brought to the table with an unprecedented scale. The North American Water and Power Alliance, or NAWBA. This wasn't a sci-fi sketch, but a meticulously calculated system of hundreds of dams, pumping stations, canals, tunnels, and reservoirs stretching from Alaska and Canada, across the Rocky Mountains, and distributing water throughout the entire western United States. On paper, Nawapa promised to end the thirst of arid states, expand cities, 
boost large-scale agriculture, and create a completely new water order for the continent. For places like Nevada, the project symbolized a new era. One where the desert would no longer dictate human destiny. But that same colossal scale was also the reason for Nawapa's downfall. The estimated cost far exceeded the financial capacity of the time. International disputes arose, the environmental movement gained momentum, and unprecedented ecological risks prevented the project from ever leaving the drawing board. Nawapa became a symbol of an era when faith in engineering overshadowed caution toward nature. Though it was never built, it left behind a legacy more important than any physical structure, the mindset that water could be controlled on a continental scale. And as traditional water sources began to weaken in the 21st century, that mindset returned once again, in new forms. When dreams of drawing water from the North collapsed, the American West was forced to look in a different direction. Not at the map, but toward the horizon. In front of them lay the Pacific Ocean, a vast, seemingly endless body of water. And it was here that a once dismissed idea began to resurface. If there's no fresh water left to share, why not create it from the sea? Technically, the idea sounded nearly impossible. Seawater is salty, heavy, corrosive, and unusable for drinking or agriculture in its natural state. To turn it into fresh water, humans must force billions of gallons through ultra-thin membranes under immense pressure, consuming amounts of energy once reserved for heavy industry. And for every gallon of clean water produced, there's a byproduct, a concentrate of brine even saltier than the original ocean. A waste product that, if mishandled, could devastate coastal ecosystems. For decades, this was why desalination remained on the sidelines. Too expensive, too power-hungry, too risky. But the 21st century changed the equation. Reverse osmosis technology became more efficient, the cost of solar energy plummeted, and most importantly, traditional water sources began to dry up. When the Colorado River could no longer meet demand, when massive reservoirs repeatedly hit record lows, ideas once considered crazy began to seem more reasonable than ever. This new hypothesis no longer spoke of conquering nature like Nawapa once did, but of creating an artificial water cycle. Water would be drawn from the ocean, desalinated at the coast, then fed into existing networks of canals, pipelines, and basins. Instead of reshaping the continent, people sought to leverage existing infrastructure, and the one resource the desert has in abundance, sunlight. For Nevada, this idea carries special meaning. It doesn't promise a miracle, nor guarantee that the desert will become an oasis. But it offers something that never existed before, a source of water that doesn't depend on rain, rivers, or geographic borders. And that very possibility has made the idea of drawing water from the ocean, despite all its risks, the most serious option the West has considered in decades. As of now, the ambition to bring ocean water into Nevada is not yet a project. It remains a hypothesis, discussed in meeting rooms, technical reports, and simulation models. No canals are being dug, no pipelines are being laid across the desert, and no political decision has been strong enough to turn the idea into a real-world undertaking. Everything remains at the stage of possible, never crossing into in-progress. This isn't because the idea lacks technical foundation. On the contrary, it has been analyzed in great detail, from desalination technologies and energy requirements to potential transport routes and long-term economic impacts. History has already taught the American West a costly lesson about bringing water into the desert, and that lesson is called the Salton Sea. It wasn't born from long-term vision or a comprehensive water strategy, but from a technical mistake in the early 20th century. When engineers attempted to divert water from the Colorado River into the Imperial Valley for irrigation, the river unexpectedly broke through the earthen canal system and flooded a massive depression below sea level. In a short time, a new inland sea appeared in the middle of the California desert. At first, the Salton Sea was seen as a miracle. Its vast surface reflected the desert sun, fish thrived, migratory birds returned, and resorts and marinas sprang up along the shoreline. But what no one accounted for was this. 
the sea had no outlet. Every drop of water that entered had only one way out, evaporation. And as the water disappeared, salt and chemicals stayed behind. Over the decades, the Salton Sea gradually became an ecological trap. Salinity levels rose beyond that of the ocean, fish died off in massive numbers, and toxic algae bloomed in the harsh heat. As water levels dropped, the lake bed was exposed, revealing sediment full of salt, pesticides, and heavy metals. Desert winds lifted these particles into the air, creating toxic dust storms that traveled for tens of kilometers, directly impacting the health of surrounding communities. The Salton Sea revealed a disturbing truth. Bringing water into the desert does not automatically create a sustainable ecosystem. Without natural flows, without self-cleaning mechanisms, and without long-term management, water becomes a catalyst for degradation, not revival. And because of this precedent, every plan to create new lakes in Nevada, no matter how thoroughly calculated, inevitably faces one big question. Will this desert be saved? or is it just repeating an old mistake on a larger scale? Today, as ideas of drawing water from the ocean remain too risky to move beyond the blueprint stage, Nevada is choosing a safer path, wastewater reuse. In a land where every mistake with water can have consequences lasting decades, the state isn't trying to perform miracles, but is focused on preserving what it already has. Instead of letting water disappear into the desert, as happened with the Salton Sea, Nevada has built a closed-loop system. Nearly all indoor water used in the Las Vegas area is collected, treated, and pumped back into Lake Mead, the primary lifeline of Southern Nevada. In return, the state is allowed to withdraw additional clean water from the federal system, effectively extending the life of every drop rather than consuming it once and losing it forever. This is no small solution. Thanks to this strategy, Las Vegas has become one of the most water-efficient cities in the U.S. When it comes to reuse, significantly reducing the amount of water lost to the environment. They don't just save water, they retain every drop within the cycle of use, turning what seemed like waste into a renewed source of life for the entire community. But no matter how closed the water loop becomes, wastewater reuse only addresses the portion of water people use indoors. The rest, the water lost to outdoor evaporation, is where Nevada loses the most. And it's here that the state has had to confront a familiar symbol of American life, the green lawn. In Las Vegas and many cities across the West, most water doesn't flow through kitchen sinks or showers. It vanishes on lawns, gardens, and golf courses under the desert sun. So alongside efforts to retain water within the treatment system, Nevada began doing something once considered unthinkable, removing grass from the desert. Decorative lawns have been systematically reduced, replaced with native desert landscaping, rocks, gravel, cacti, and drought-resistant plants. This approach is known as xeriscaping, growing plants suited to the climate, rather than forcing the climate to suit human aesthetics. The change is visible to the eye. Neighborhoods that were once lush and green now take on earthier tones, while parks and golf courses are irrigated with high-precision systems, moisture sensors, and strict watering schedules. This isn't a flashy solution, but it directly impacts daily life, where every square meter of grass removed means thousands of gallons of water saved each year. If wastewater reuse is how Nevada keeps water underground, then landscape conservation is how the state stops wasting it on the surface of the desert. The story of Nevada is not one of conquering the desert, but of learning to live within limits. After more than a century of pursuing massive engineering feats, from river redirection to dreams of drawing water from the ocean, the driest state in the U.S. has slowly come to understand a hard truth. Water is not something that can be created infinitely with just money and technology. Instead of continuing to gamble on massive experiments, Nevada is choosing more cautious steps, preserving every drop it already has, reusing it, and adjusting how humans live in the desert. Not through new lakes, but through new landscapes, new mindsets, and new boundaries. Nevada's future may not lie in an inland sea in the desert, but in a larger lesson for the entire American West. 
In an age of water crisis, victory doesn't come from having more water, but from wasting less of it. What do you think about this issue? Leave a comment and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next journey with Terran Works.